Hello everyone, welcome in today's video. In today's videos, we we're looking at Master Roshi and we're looking at why he is more than just a moon buster. In fact, he's likely planetary. Before we get on with the video where I explain why he's above a moon buster, we should clarify what Master Roshi we're talking about here. Because the thumbnail uses a picture of my bill of F, Master Roshi, but I don't actually mean that. Instead, I mean the Master Roshi in the 21st World Martial Art Tournament with a power level of 139. This is shown in two different guides, and it's also confirmed in another guide that Master Roshi was in fact able to destroy the moon back in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament and shown directly in the anime on screen. Yes, I mean this Roshi. Consider this video a lesson in how gravitational binding energy works. I say this because this is exactly how the Versus Battle Wiki's definition for attack potency works with their planet level, moon level, small planet, large planet, all of the celestial bodies. For those of you who do not know, this is the equation for gravitational binding energy. What you need is simply the mass and the radius of the celestial body. For example, if we do it with the moon here, we get its gravitational binding energy at 1.24 times 10 to the 29 joules, which is of course moon level and versus battle wiki. That's how the tier is made. Do the same with Earth and we get it for 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules. This is the transition from small planet up to planet level on versus battle wiki. In a previous video of mine you can find on my channel from about two years ago, you'll see me use this equation to find the energy requirement to destroy certain stars. Allow me to rip something straight from that previous video. If we use the gravitational binding energy formula that is normally shown, we can equate it to that of kinetic energy, as energy is never destroyed, just always converted. Now we can actually prove that the gravitational binding energy is just a form of kinetic energy. To do this proof, we actually just need to use the escape velocity. We say that the velocity in kinetic energy is the escape velocity of the planet. So we start off with the equation for our, our kinetic energy and replace the velocity with the escape velocity of the planet. Now we need to just do some simplification, starting with simplifying the square root and the squared within the equation. The next two things to simplify are quite simple, so let's do them together. Simplify the half and the times two to make absolute nothing whatsoever, and then the mass and the mass to make the mass squared. This shows us that our gravitational binding energy is equivalent to that of kinetic energy. Let's address an issue here. When I always try to simplify things down for the audience, I sometimes miss out certain details that are irrelevant, but do make an impact in the long run. For example, here, the actual equation for gravitational binding energy has a constant in front of three fifths. Now, if you want to know why this is, it's simply because the shape of a sphere with gravity will pull inwards with an efficiency that would require that much more energy. This is shown with some integration that is a lot more complicated than the simple rearrangement I've done a second ago. Here is a quick image showing how you can do it if you are interested and would like the full proof. The reason why I don't bring up the full proof and simply the fact how it's arranged from the kinetic energy equation is because that relationship is what's important for this video more than anything else. Of course, the big question, why does this matter? The reason why this matters is because of the escape velocity. Let's look at the escape velocity we are using and why this is a problem. The escape velocity of the moon, for example, is 2.38 kilometers each second, which is very fast. The moon's radius is 1737.4 kilometers. This is so large that the time frame that it would take for the escape velocity to move the moon's radius would be 730 seconds, which is 12 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, if you've seen the anime, you know that the actual time frame for Master Roshi destroying the moon is only about six seconds. And even if you haven't seen the anime, I think we all can agree that Master Roshi is not taking 12 minutes and 10 seconds to destroy the moon. In fact, it's happening so fast people didn't even notice it at first. Now that we have established the time normal moon busting would take and how fast Master Roshi did it, we can get the difference in the time frame at 121.66 times. Now, this is with kinetic energy and why the velocity was important. Velocity is distance divided by time, meaning that if the time frame is 121.66 times slower, then that would mean the velocity is 121.66 times greater. Therefore, in the kinetic energy formula, where the velocity is squared, the multiplier is 14,803. 
Therefore, Master Roshi is 14,803 times moon busting. Now let's make this comparison clear. We listed the energy of moon busting we previously calculated, but in its full form. We compare that to that of busting planet Earth. We say that planet Earth is the equivalent of busting 1,800 moons. Master Roshi is even more powerful, being able to bust 8.217 Earths. Yeah, that's right. This Roshi right here is over eight times more powerful than the energy needed to destroy planet Earth. If you were only here to hear about Master Roshi and why he's beyond planetary, skip to the outro of this video because now we're talking about applying this to other characters and how I can teach you to do such for yourself. Now you may be asking, is this the case just for Master Roshi? No, I should make this clear that it is not just Master Roshi. It could be anyone who destroys the world from Dragon Ball. In fact, it can actually be anyone who destroys the world from any verse, not just Dragon Ball. And in fact, it doesn't even need to be a person. It could be a machine that destroys the Earth or another planet, star, moon, wouldn't matter. As long as it's the gravitational potential energy being used and it explodes faster than it actually should, then what should happen is you should redo the energy requirements because it will be much, much higher than the normal explosion. Now, let me help you so that you guys could work out this for yourself and, you know, discover the energy of destroying certain planets or stars or moons, whatever you want. First, you need to work out the gravitational binding energy of the celestial body in question. Then, find the escape velocity of the celestial body in question. Links in the description for calculators for both of those, just to help you out. Then, you should look at how long it should take to explode with a celestial body, given its radius divided by its escape velocity. Then, pull out a stopwatch and time how long it actually takes to explode. Next, you need to find the difference between the normal time and how long it actually exploded in the scene. Once you get this difference, you shall square it for your multiplier. Using this multiplier, you can then times it by the gravitational binding energy, and you will get your final answer. This will be the energy you are looking for. For those of you who prefer it as an equation instead of a set of steps for instructions, look at it as the energy equals the gravitational binding energy times our multiplier. Remembering that our multiplier was our time difference squared, if you recall, that time difference was actually the normal time, quote unquote, divided by the actual time. And of course, the normal time was the radius divided by the escape velocity, while the actual time was literally what you recorded. And of course, simplifying that gets that final equation that looks much nicer and is much easier to use if you wanted to work this out for yourself. And with that, it brings us to the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all found it informative and made you realize how powerful Master Roshi really is. I have put out a poll. The poll is still running. The current most popular choice for the next video will be Garu versus Boros. Another popular choice is Piccolo Jr. versus Boros. And there was an interesting one put in the description by Frank Godzilla, where he mentioned a king of a monster versus king of the monster, Orochi versus Godzilla. With that, I'd say check out my friends, Captain Forrest and Corin O'Keefe. They make videos more regular than me, it seems like. Go check out their content. Here's a recommended video for you to check out. And of course, thank you all for watching. See you next time.